Jonathan Taylor, rough year for him. He played in 11 games, but remember one of those games he left after just one touch. So basically he played in 10 games. And in those 10 games, I mean, even adjusting, he was number 11 per game in non-PPR, number 12 per game in full PPR. It wasn't just the injuries. The performance wasn't nearly as good. So trust or bust Jonathan Taylor. You got to use a first round pick. I think in the consensus rankings, by the way, very cool feature. Now we have on CBS sports.com. You go to, uh, go to CBS sports.com slash fantasy slash football. Click on the rankings. We now have the consensus rankings listed. I think he's eighth in the consensus rankings in PPR. So Dave trust or bust Jonathan Taylor as a say mid first round pick. I'm going to trust him. We saw last year, 14.4. Is that what you said was his per game average in PPR? If you take out the game, he only played one snap. I, th- I think injuries did him in. I said he was 12th per game. I didn't say the number. That's horrible, by the way. That's almost about nine points lower than it was the year before. Agreed, but I, I don't even know if that's his floor. Like, I-, I think his floor is a little bit higher than that. As long as he stays healthy, I think he'll be okay. He played through an ankle sprain. He had turf toe. The ankle sprain was so bad that he had surgery for it in January. I, I think this offense could also be a little bit more conservative. They're either going to have a rookie quarterback who's only started 13 games in college under center, or they're going to have Gardner Minshew. They've got an offensive line that's, I think it's okay. I don't think it's as good as it once was, but I think it'll be good enough. And Taylor's a really good player. I'm happy to trust him to be my RB1. He's a first-round pick. You trust him, Jamie? Trust your boss, Jonathan Taylor. I do. You know, I'm looking at his game log from last year, and when he came back from the the second absence, I'm going to guess it was, yeah, the second absence, uh, from week 10 through 13, it was uh, three of those games were 16 PPR points or more. And the only one that didn't in that stretch was he didn't score against the Cowboys uh, in week 13. So I, I think you know what you're getting. You're getting a guy that's going to get 20 plus touches on a week to week basis. That's awesome. I do think that we have a coach, you know, we could say all these things about what Shane Steichen and the system he was part of in Philadelphia and what that could hopefully do for Anthony Richardson. It was unbelievable for Miles Sanders. Now, granted, the offensive line was great, but Sanders had a rebirth, you know, or, or, you know, just what he performed last year and scored 13 touchdowns, you know. So uh, I think there's still a chance for double digit touchdowns. I think there's still a chance for, you know, 35 plus catches. He did that, you know, in his breakout season two years ago. And so he's never going to be a, a 50 catch guy unless they just change everything. And I don't think that's going to happen with Richardson under center because we know that mobile quarterbacks tend to escape as opposed to dump the ball off. So you got to hope that he doesn't lose too many short yard area touchdowns like Sanders did at times. You have to hope that, you know, the, this offense just isn't completely inept. And obviously there's no semblance of a passing game. Uh, but I do think that, you know, depending on where you get him in the first round. And for me, he's now behind Bijan. Uh, he's behind uh, Barkley and PPR. I think I, I keep flip flopping those two guys, um, but uh, still a top five guy. But I still think that like, for example, I got him at 11 yesterday in in a half PPR league that's ridiculous value you know so if he goes after Kelsey if he goes after the first three receivers which is what happened there um, and you may see him you know depending on how this offense looks in the preseason if it really struggles you may see him fall behind some quarterbacks you know based on how ADP is probably going to look with Mahomes and potentially Allen and Hurts going in the first round so would not be a surprise if he slips to the back end of the first round consistently Uh, but you know what you're getting still young still explosive still going to be the feature guy and there's a lot to just love about what Taylor should be doing in a bounce back here. And we shouldn't understate the efficiency that should increase because he's playing with a running quarterback. And I, I did some data digging. I don't care if you, do you guys want to hear it or not sure. about how running backs. Okay. So I looked at the lead running backs on teams with a top five quarterback in rushing yards. So this is Chicago, Philly, Baltimore, Buffalo, and the Giants. Um, all the lead running backs averaged at least four yards per carry. Four of them were at 4.4. Four of the five running backs were above league average in yards before contact per rush and top 13 overall in yards before contact per rush. That means that defenses have to play and maybe pause a little bit because they have to count for the quarterback as a possible guy with the football. Three were also well above average in explosive run rates and top 15 overall. And the list does not include J.K. Dobbins, who was just crazy explosive last year. Keep that name in mind on draft day, people. He was tied for first with 5.7 yards per carry, first with 2.57 yards before contact per rush, and first in explosive run rate last year. Nor does the list include Khalil Herbert, who was 
tied with Dobbins in yards per carry, fifth in yards before contact per rush, and third in explosive run rate. These are all running backs of different flavors, different sizes, different shapes, and Jonathan Taylor is better than pretty much all of them when it comes to talent. And so that efficiency that he should gain, assuming Anthony Richardson knows what he's doing and he runs the football, could lead to him having a very good year on the ground. And he might have uh, his best year. I don't. I don't know what to expect. It's hard to project the catches with Richardson. But when they traded, and he be bad. Well, when they traded, I mean, it, it, it could be. But he could also be an outlet. My point is though, when he they traded Naeem Hines, played four games uh, without Hines, not including the Minnesota game where he left on the first drive. He dominated the third down snaps. He had almost every third down snap among the running backs. So when Hines was out of the picture, Jonathan Taylor, the snap counts actually went up. He was almost an every down back. Um, so we'll see if that. Uh... It'll be, it'll be a question of design receptions or design passing plays versus the escape ability versus yeah. dump off passes, you know? Yeah. So the design passing plays will probably help him, but you know, how many of those are going to actually be where he's the number one option on that, on that play. And Richardson was in the bottom quarter in, target rate to running backs among qualifying quarterbacks in college last year. All right, let's go to Josh Jacobs here. Jacobs trust or bust. He was on a per game basis. Number two in non PPR number three in PPR. He had an amazing year. I mean, over 2000 total yards. He's played every game. Jamie trust or bust Jonathan Taylor. Uh, and I apologize. Where did he go? Uh, it's not, uh, not Jonathan Taylor. We did him. Josh Jacobs. Where did he go in yesterday? I think he, he went ahead he went of the first round. He went, he went ahead of Jonathan Taylor. I think he was sixth. Um, so I don't want to trust him there, but I, I, I still will trust him if I get him in round two. You know, so I, I, I think, again, you look at it. This is a guy that's not coming off the field. You know, there, there's nothing in that backfield that suggests, especially with the same coaching staff, oh, this is the year for Zamir White. I just don't see that happening. You know, so um, – with a quarterback that I think is going to be more of a game manager than what they had and maybe throw the ball to him even more so in Jimmy Garoppolo, uh, he's going to have another fantastic season. And I love the fact that he's still playing for a contract. You know, he's not, he didn't get his long-term deal. So as long as there's no issues about him not reporting and holding out in any of those stories, you know, he's still got a chance to be in the mix for a top five overall player and top five overall running back. So uh, yes, I will still trust him. I just don't want to take him in the first round. And the floor is what he did in each of his prior three years to 2022, which is anywhere from 14.1 to 14.3 PPR points per game. That's not first round good. It's, and it's really not second round good, but it's still an okay floor for a running back who has exhibited that type of consistency. I think you have to buy into it. I'm a little nervous about the workload. He had 393 touches last year, 23.1 touches per game. That's about three touches per game higher than his previous career high. And I wonder if Garoppolo, the game manager, being under center, changes the way that defenses go after the, the Raiders, along with Waller not being there. I think that those are two important changes that might impact just how many defenders will be keying in on Jacobs, both as a runner and a pass catcher. He's a round two pick. I'm good with him there. Uh, definitely don't like him in round one. I, I would say, though, the loss of Waller is probably made up with the addition of Myers, the addition of Mayer, and maybe a healthy Hunter Renfro. Uh, 